Good day everyone. This is Christian Miranda, a business management student of Visayas State University. I will be discussing about research paper in connection with international marketing. Title of the research is Sit Down at the Ball Game How Trade Barriers Make the World Less Food Secure by Martin M. Rotten, Lindsay J. Chan, and Herdin W. Majoring. The Rationale of the Study Since food is one of the basic human needs, and given different level of scarcity and abundancy of supply throughout the world, the rising of worldwide food demands, the effects of recession for supply and demand of food, made the researcher decide to study about international barriers. The problem of the research paper states how trade barriers make the world less food secure. Objectives. There are two main objectives of the research. First, to quantify the contributions of trade policies in exacerbating food prices, also their consequences for producers, owners of factors of production, household and governments around the world. Second, to inform the debate on whether or not liberalizing agricultural trade will mitigate or worsen food price volatility and food security. Analysis The author uses graph showing the economic impacts of ex export taxes in a small and large exporting country. In this graph, we can see the, the changes in the supply and demand with and without the intervention of export taxes. As shown in the graph, initial domestic price equals world price. At the given price, the difference between the domestic supply and the domestic demand is exported. When exports are taxed, represented by T, the domestic price falls to P1 with the world price remain at P0. In that price, domestic, domestic supply now falls while domestic demand increases. As a consequence, less is exported from the small country. Domestic consumers benefit from the export tax because they consume more at a lower price. Conversely, Domestic producers are at a disadvantage as they produce less at a lower price. The export tax that is levied by the government increases public revenues by T times the level of exports. Another graph shown in figure 2 shows what happens when either a small importer that is a price taker or a large importer that can influence world prices impose an ad valorem tax or import tariff. The difference between domestic supply and domestic demand is imported. So when tariff is levied on imports, the domestic price rises to P1 with the world price remaining at P0. Domestic supply increases while domestic demand falls. As a consequence, less is imported from the small country. Domestic consumers lose out from the import tariff because they consume less at a higher price. Conversely, domestic producers benefited as they produced more at a higher price. The government also benefited since the import tariff that is delivered by the government increases public revenues by T times the level of imports. On the other hand, in a situation where reducing tariff is in place, the losses to consumers would fall, whereas gains to producers and government would fall also. In case of the import tariff is reduced by so much that it becomes a government subsidy, consumers will now be benefited and producers would lose out from the fall in the domestic price caused by a subsidy.
empirical model graph. A comparative static multi-regional general equilibrium global trade analysis project model or GTAP model was also employed in the research. GTAP model accounts for the behavior of household firms and governments in the global economy and how they interact in market. The model has been widely used as a tool for global trade analysis. As shown in the Table 1, GTAP commodities are aggregated by regions, distinguishing the most important net exporters and importers on the world market for grains. And also it is aggregated into seven categories, distinguishing the most important types of grains, rice, wet, and other grains, and five factors of production. Four different scenarios were made to examine the impact of rising wet prices under protectionist and free trade policy responses. Simulation For each of the supply shock and policy response scenarios, the researcher first consider effects on the domestic economy of the country where the shock or response occurs. The researchers focus on the four most important effects of trade measures as identified in the partial equilibrium analysis. First, the food security effect. Second, the anti-farmer effect. Third, the effect on the overall terms of trade. And fourth, effect on overall trade revenues. With the analysis and research made, they come up with these conclusions. First, the results reveal that major net exporters are generally better off when implementing export taxes for food security purposes. Because despite a negative impact on farmers, it has a positive effect on food security, terms of trade, and potentially trade tax revenues so that overall welfare is likely to improve. Second, the large exporting countries export price instability causing world food prices to rise further. This is to the detriment of net importing countries who lose in terms of food security, terms of trade, and overall welfare despite a positive impact on farmers. Third, net food import countries have limited means to react as they are constrained by fiscal limits to reduce tariffs or subsidize imports. And fourth, liberalizing agricultural trade mitigates food price volatility and contributes to food security. Liberalization leads to higher level of production and consumption of food at lower cost and higher level of global welfare. That's all. I hope you learned something from my presentation. Thank you for listening and God bless.